Friday, you already know what that means. No work day. About to go in and get a haircut from my boy Chris Too Cold. He's about to bust me up. Let's go. Chris Too Cold in here. Hi, yeah. Def. Um, this before and after is going to be epic because the shit's getting crazy. <laughs> Let's go. My boy Chris too cold, just oh, yeah. just too crispy. The haircut's important. You already know, man. Come on, man. come on, man. Show him. <laughs> really excited to get my kettlebell workout. Yesterday, something amazing happened. Oh my god, the power of going on a walk by yourself without your phone. I did it. I came up with how I'm going to take Rapid Fire Music Academy to that next level. I realized a few different things. Number one, marketing message. Buyers are in three states. Pro not problem aware and not solution aware. Cold. Two, they're problem aware but not solution aware. Warm. Three, they're problem aware and they're solution aware. Hot. My problem, why is it that I'm always getting on calls with artists in a really tough spot financially, in which case I cannot help them, or they're not that serious about their music, in which case they bother me and get me upset? Why is it that I've just been struggling constantly with this? Because I always am marketing to people who are not problem aware and not solution aware. I shouldn't be trying to convince artists to produce their own music. That's too hard, because then, then I have, then, after that, oh, also join, like getting them to see the value of joining Rapid Fire Music Academy. All of my best clients, they already knew they needed to produce music. They already wanted to do it. They just did, weren't aware of a solution until I came along. That right there was the first revelation. The second was my new offer. Now, by the time you're watching this, I'm sure the offer has already been launched. But basically, I realized that Although my offer was already valuable enough, I thought, how can I make my offer even more irresistible? How can I make my offer for Rapid Fire Music Academy even better? And I did it, I came up with it. So now, in addition to learning music production in 90 days, you're gonna also learn how to attract new fans coming, messaging you, wanting to hear your songs on autopilot. The best marketing strategy you can possibly do is having fans come to you asking you to hear a song and then you having a one-to-one -one conversation with them. When I think of the price of what I'm gonna be charging for the first five people, it makes me sick to my tummy. Like this, sick to my tummy. Because it's too low. Like the price is way too fucking low. But for the first five people, I'm cool with letting them in like that because it helps just get some people through the door. I'm hyped because I feel like I'm launching a new offer and honestly, like launching a new offer is huge. So I'm really excited about this. About to go hit my gym workout, about to get after it. Let's fucking go. So today's special, I just finished up my kettlebell workout. It's Friday, 6.50. And because on Fridays, I don't take calls. I got a lot of time. I'm about to go hoop. I'm already drenched, breathing heavy, hard 30 minute, 29 minute kettlebell workout but now i'm getting my i'm going back out to the car we're getting getting the shoes and we about to ball baby out for the daily walk had a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on today basically what we're going to be doing is helping artists after they've learned how to fully produce and they can get their songs out there more consistently. How do you then get fans coming to you, message you with the intent to wanna hear your music? So that's what we're gonna be doing now in the Rapid Fire Music Academy in addition to teaching how to produce. Really exciting stuff on the horizon. Really excited for everything we've got coming. Another camping trip. We're in Tahoe. I feel like what's been going on with Leezy's life recently, it's kind of interesting. I was watching, I was watching episode one of Leezy's life. Season one, episode one which was four years prior to this episode. It was crazy to reminisce about what I was going through four years ago. It was 2020, it was during COVID. I remember just what I was going through, my regiment. And I feel like as I reflect on like what I'm going through in my life right now, 
I'm like, wow, all that work you were putting in, Lee, you're sort of starting to reap some of those benefits. You know, a little bit, right? I'm nowhere close to where I want to be. Nowhere close to where I want to be. But, you know, I, a camping trip, going, you, maybe you watched the last episode of Lizzie's Life. Or if you didn't, I went kayaking with my dad on a Friday. Just so many different things that you can kind of, I can kind of start to see. And I'm like, all that work that I, and I'm still putting in work like crazy. But all that work I was putting in is, is, is it compounds. Right? All the work you put into whatever it is you do, it compounds. And you can start to do things, you can sprinkle in, you can start to sprinkle in a little bit of fun, a little bit of, little bit of adventure here and there. Sometimes though, you're going to go through seasons where you're just not going to be able to do that. And that season could be one month, it could be three months, six months, 12 months. That season could be years. Right, mine was years, 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 years of not a lot of vacations, not a lot of trips, not a lot of spending, just a lot of nose to the grindstone. It's a lot of that. And I'm still at my nose to the grindstone, but I've figured out a really great way to, you know, be able to pack it into the schedule that I want to pack it into, a Monday through Thursday. And my wife is where is she? <laughs> She's there in the tent. I don't know why she didn't want to be in the clip, but I'll take you guys over there. Maybe she'll be cool enough to want to be in this clip. All right, we're going to go into Casa de Lirica. Tent style. Hey, yo. Hey. Oh, my gosh. Hey, yo. Hey. We are camping. Are you sleeping back? Here, we'll give you a little MTV Cribs. Welcome to our home for the night. <laughs> Oh my god. How is everything here in Tahoe? Good. Are we having a good time? We're having a great time, yeah. I can't wait to go to the beach later. I know. We're here at Zephyr Cove. I by the way, I know where I'm having my coffee tomorrow morning. Oh, right look there. at you. Look at this beautiful view outside the tent. Look at that. Oh I got the best view right here. Here's my best view. This beautiful person. That's my best view right there. <laughs> Why do you think people should learn to enjoy their life? Because that means that's the most important thing to do, like this. <laughs> I wouldn't say anything. So we're heading off to Europe. <laughs> Wife and I are going to London, then Italy, and we're gonna spend two weeks. Never been to Europe, never been to Italy, never been to London. I'm so pumped to go to Europe. I'm so pumped to have some time with just me and my wife. Super pumped to just get out, go do some fun stuff in London and Italy. Since it's not the day before, I have not started packing, of course. I actually still have laundry to do. And uh, my wife has already started looking at picking out outfits. She was trying on outfits last night already, spending hour, a couple hours doing that. And I was like, it's not the day before, I ain't packing yet. You feel me? So just really, really excited. And I appreciate you watching this episode of Lizzie's Life. This was really fun for me to just get to kind of summarize some highlights that have happened this August of 2024. What's gonna be super dope is the next episode of Lizzie's Life. We're just gonna go Europe vlog. So when I'm there, obviously I'll have my phone. And I'm just gonna be filming stuff in London and Italy, which I've never been to. So the next episode of Lizzie's Life is gonna be lit. Make sure to check back in for that. But I appreciate you always for supporting, watching, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.